Thursday, and welcome to the PHNX Sun Devil Show. I'm your host, Shane Diefenbach, alone on this fine Thursday after a nice day out at another beautiful ASU spring practice. A little toasty this morning. Got up to like the 80s, uh, but we survived. You know, we got these these nice uh, uh, PHNX shirts we got are very breathable. Uh, they, they work for occasions like this, and you need that to survive in the desert. How's everybody doing today? Welcome in um, to... You know, we're trying to get past everything from yesterday and hopefully we can push through. And you know, we got some news at the end of the show that probably isn't the best, except or especially for JJ, as we see him already in the chat. Uh, and trust me, JJ, we will get to ASU hoops. This is my show today, so we will be talking about that. But of course, we do have to talk about ASU football before we do anything else. As you see by the title of the show, uh, we're going to talk about 10 things that we've learned so far through three weeks of watching this roster practice. You know, it, it, it feels like Kenny's been here for a couple of years already. And though it's only been one since his first uh, couple of weeks of spring practice last year, uh, it, it feels it feels like he's been here for a while and he's definitely gotten more acclimated. So this roster, though, players are different, does feel pretty similar to last year. Obviously, there's a talent difference and we'll get into a lot of that. But we can just start with uh, number one. And this is something that we you know we've talked about a lot in the past without with the running back position and the just the offense as a whole but the first thing that we've learned is I think we're going to see three running backs like we saw uh when Daniel Ngata was here as the third running back you know you had your two guys that shared the load and I think this year Scott's going to get more of a load than uh, a split back field like we saw with Rashad White and Chip Trainum. but I think you're going to see three different backs you're going to see maybe even four at times Obviously, Scott's going to be your bell cow. Scott's their every down back. And and just because a guy is, quote unquote, an every down back, it doesn't mean that there's no room for other backs. There's two back sets. There's we, there's there's running backs on this roster that can play wide receiver that we've seen before. Uh, and we haven't even seen the newest Sun Devil running back, Jason Brown, who will get here in the fall. Uh, so you're going to see three running backs. You're going to see Cam Scadaboo. You, you'll probably see... A lot of DeCarlos Brooks, especially at the goal line. You're going to see Relique Brown a lot. You're going to see Kyson Brown, who's been awesome. Uh, and, and and those three running backs, those four running backs, are going to get a lot of touches and knock on wood, touch metal. Like There's no injuries this year to that position. But you're, you're going to see a lot of different things. And there's there's a ton of ways this offense can score and can can – hopefully get get out of a three and out situation as they couldn't last year so often uh, and I think you're going to do that with multi-purpose backs and not just multi-purpose backs but multi-purpose players we say we see a lot of Jordan Tyson uh, out of the backfield um, you know end arounds whatever we saw a lot of that out of Elijah Badger when he was a freshman there's going to be a lot of different things that this this son of offense can do and obviously Kenny wasn't here when Badger was a freshman so having a guy that isn't a freshman, but basically is a sophomore in Jordan Tyson, who's put on a ton of weight. It's going to be fun to see him be moved around a lot. And that just that doesn't stop with the offense. That that continues to the defense as well. There's a lot of plug-and-play pieces on this team, and that's a good thing. It's not in the bad way where, you know, if you don't have a starting quarterback, you don't have a quarterback. Uh, this is a different thing. This is this is this seems like it's going to be a lot more fun uh, to watch than than years in the past where you didn't really realize who was the true starter at at each position. Um, how's everybody doing in the chat? We got Sharon here, LTC, Chris, welcome in the goal line Brooks, of course. Yeah, he, he, he looks good so far. Number two, second thing we've learned is maybe we have it. The leader of this defense. We don't really know who truly is going to lead the defense because in, in years past, you know, you had your captain America, like Kyle Soley, uh, and, and even in, in last year you had Jordan Clark. 
This year, you don't really have either of those guys. And a lot of the stars on on defense last year, who who you know your leading tackler, Shamari Simmons, he's back. Weren't really leaders last year because it was their first year in this scheme. It was the first year in the scheme for everybody technically because of Brian Ward, but it was the first year at this school. Now everybody has a second year, excluding the freshmen, in this scheme and the transfers that are going to step up into a leadership role. And we asked Kenny what you know who who he has seen as a leader of this defense, and this is what he had to say. Hundred percent, I think our entire team is filled with new leaders. You know, I think anytime you're in year one. It's hard for a new guy to overtake the leadership that somebody had in the past, right? That's hard. It's hard to transfer leadership when the old leadership is present, right? Very difficult. So I think now that a lot of the guys, you know, that were the leaders of the past are gone, it allows those opportunities for the new, the new era to step up and lead. And I think you're seeing those guys be more comfortable in leadership roles because of that. Yeah, I think there's you. You still, you're, it's a still a wait and see thing uh, for this team. But I think anybody that's been to practice has seen that Xavier Alfred is probably the most vocal leader out there, and that's not really a question. He's, he's, he's you know, he's there. His presence is known, and and whether that be yelling or just him communicating or making a play, you know, he's there. And Shamari is another guy who's probably going to play alongside him at that safety position. He is way less of a vocal leader and way more of a watch this leader. And we, we got the chance to talk to him a little bit today. And I asked him, you know, who he sees aside from himself, because he has called himself a leader and he is a leader on this team. But who aside from himself is has stepped into that leadership role? And he kind of gave a similar answer to Kenny. Um, obviously, Xavier and Alfred, cause that, that's my, we came in together. That's my dog right there. You know what I'm saying? He's more the the talkative leader and I'm more like the, you know, really just showing, you know what I'm saying? But Zay is obviously a great leader. He is a top leader on um, Clay Smith. I mean, we, we just got a lot of players here, you know what I'm saying, that, that played last year, that should have played last year, that's just doing a great job leading now. Oh, is that Zay, he, I just learned so much from Zay because he, he knows so much about the game and stuff like that. And, you know, we, me and him came in together, we had the same goal, same dream and stuff like that. So when I seen him not able to play last year, that really hurt me on the inside because, you know, he's my dog. I want, I want to see everybody win, win with me. So just to see him be able to play right now, that's just, I'm, I'm glad for him. I'm happy for him. I know he's going to do exciting things. Yeah, everybody talks about Xavier and Alfred and how tough that was for him to have to sit out a full year last year and you know, we've heard from him multiple times. We've heard from Jake Smith, who also had to sit out uh, a full year last year. And and it's just, it, it it's so exciting to get to see this guy play because he just flies around the field. I've compared him to a guy like Quandre Diggs before where he's just, he's a, he's a missile. Um, and again, he lets his presence known. And, and that second part was me asking Shamari, like what it's like to play with him and how much he learns from him every day. And obviously you heard what he said. He's just, he, he loves ball. Uh, and that's really all you can ask for. It, 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 talent helps as well. And but you know both those guys have plenty of that. So I think the leader of this defense is still kind of up in the air. But we don't really know about the linebacker position group quite yet. You know, last year they were lucky to get a guy like Travion Brown, who was able to transfer from Washington State with Brian Ward, and kind of filled in that leadership role in the linebacker room uh, pretty easily. But they don't really have a guy like that yet. And, you know, Caleb McColl has been here for a while, and they have some transfers at linebacker that have been playing really well. But that's still up in the air, and that's going to be really exciting to see come fall camp. But you learn a lot after spring ball. Spring ball is kind of more the acclimation period. And then they all, you know, train in the summer together, go home for a bit. And that's when you really see the bonds grow is it will come fall camp. So I'm really excited, of course, every year for Camp T and really excited to see these guys uh, when they come back in fall camp. That brings me to my next thing that we learned. Number three is this strength and conditioning staff really doesn't mess around. And we're going to see a lot of that in fall camp. But we've already seen that this year. We've talked about on shows past how Camp Scadaboo looks like a completely different back. He lost upwards of 10 pounds and he feels lighter on his feet. He's going to run people over, as Kenny's mentioned. Like that, They're not worried about that. Like Him shedding weight doesn't mean that he's not going to run people over. He's going to continue to do that. He's Camp Scadaboo. We know what he can do. Uh, but Kenny mentioned that they didn't have enough explosive runs last year and scat was was awesome at finding the hole he's great vision and and we'll run you over but you know after that second level 
they couldn't really get past. They couldn't they couldn't they couldn't break a 50 yarder for a touchdown. And I think that was some emphasis on him losing some weight this year. Uh, but that that's that starts with the strength and conditioning staff. Um, you, you think about guys that we saw coming la- coming into last year, coming into fall camp last year, where you know he was a freshman in, in spring ball. And as I've mentioned before, like these quote unquote freshmen technically aren't college freshmen yet. They're 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 seniors in high school that left early and they're here for for spring. And so those guys haven't put on their college weight yet. And we have, we're not we're not going to see that until the fall when they get a full summer with Joe Connolly and that strength and conditioning staff. All those DBs, all those new DBs that we've been, you know, so excited to watch and so excited to see Tony Lewis and Cuba, uh, Rodney Bimmage, like those guys will get the transformations that Montana Warren and Keith Abney got last year. I remember talking to 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 Montana and he was like, oh yeah, I put on 15 pounds. I mentioned him yesterday. JoJo, what though he transferred, this him his transformation from spring ball to fall camp was the, one of the most impressive I've ever seen, and that was done with the strength and conditioning staff. So obviously another thing we've learned is something that we kind of already knew, but the strength and conditioning staff doesn't mess around. They, they, they get, they get their weight up. CJ fight is another guy that just blows me away every time I see him. I mean, the dude's a true sophomore had, you know, a ton of raw strength. He was one of those guys you look and he comes in as a true freshman. You're like, that's not real. There's no way this guy's a freshman, but he was, and he is. And now he's, he's a true sophomore and you see him lose that weight and kind of gain that man strength that the coaches have talked about. And he's going to be a guy to really look out for. And you'll be able to see that impact of this strength and conditioning staff on the field with guys like that. Um, and and another thing that we'll talk about is the, you know, there, there are guys that have, you know, gotten injured that are, have, are tracking way ahead of where they were. And that comes with the staff as well. Um, the next thing is about wide receivers. And everyone's going to be really excited to talk about wide receivers because it's the, it's the sexiest room. It's just the most fun room. Everyone loves talking about receivers. Everyone loves talking about DBs, and we'll get there in a second. But I love talking about prize picks. And prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports app out there. And you can use it for a plethora of things. You can use it for daily fantasy in college sports. You can use it for daily fantasy in the Masters, Augusta, right now. You can use it for baseball that's going on right now. I have a you can you can have season long entries on prize picks and it's so easy to use you just pick more pick less do an entry it's just that easy with prize picks and right now you can sign up and use that code phnx and you can turn that 10 into a thousand dollars in just a few taps now is the time to get prize picks i've as i've said i, I love it so much i the 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 march madness was so fun during it because you know you could wake up in the morning or all a bad look and be like you know i like I like Caravan to hit a couple threes for UConn. And, I, and then I like, you know, I like this 16 seed to keep it close. And and so you can take a less on, you know, maybe a one seeds players. And it, it was really fun. So all you got to do to get involved is go to prizepicks.com slash code PHNX and use code PHNX for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash PHNX. Uh, pick more, pick less. It's just that easy. Uh, and you know what else is easy? Banking with Desert Financial Credit Union. Desert Financial is the official retail banking partner of Arizona State University. For more than 84 years, DFCU has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union, dedicated to creating exceptional experiences by giving back to the community and providing financial solutions to make lives better. Eric has said that he's never used anybody before, and that is it has made his life a lot easier. And if you're an Arizona sports fan, there's no better place to do your banking than Desert Financial Credit Union. It's the only place to show your team spirit every time you make a purchase with exclusive debit cards branded with your favorite teams. Bring the boom and get fired up with the Arizona State University Visa debit card. Now is the time to show your ASU team spirit. Open a free checking account online and get $200 plus your choice of three ASU Visa def- debit cards. Go to desertfinancial.com slash ASU to get started. Number four. The fourth thing we've learned is about the wide receivers, as I said. Uh, we've talked about it. This room is deep. And the reason why I bring this up, because this isn't really news, this room is deep for now. And that's not me trying to be negative. That's just me saying expect there to be some movement in the portal. And I, and, and I don't know if it's going to be at the receiver position. It might not be. This, this room could stay deep through the entire season, and that would be a dream. That being said, I think this era of the transfer portal and especially this period coming up there's gonna be a lot of movement for a lot of different teams not just asu this isn't just an asu thing but right now 
good lord, this re- receiver room is stacked. You know, everybody knows about Elijah Badger and Xavier Guillory. And, and you know, Guillory a little less than Badger because Badger has shown what he can do for multiple seasons and he he has longevity. You know, Elijah ba- or Xavier Guillory last year had an awesome first game and then had to deal with some injury stuff and, and you know, did not have the season everyone, and including himself, expected him to have. I, if you could look back at our shows last year, Totri and I were just glazing over this guy. So excited. Like, wow, this dude is going to be something special. And I still think he is. Um, unbelievable raw athleticism. A totally, he could be a, he could, he could be a one at a lot of schools and he's a perfect two for Arizona state. Xavier Guillory is going to have a great year, but somebody who transferred and is kind of in the same situation as Xavier and Alford, obviously Jake Smith, but Jordan Tyson, Jordan Tyson, you can kind of tell how much weight he's put on. And obviously I, I tweeted this out. It's been it's been over a year and a half, almost two years since he's seen the field because of the injury uh, at, at Colorado. And he was kind of ramping up a little bit uh, at the start of spring ball. Now he's basically a full go. He told us at practice the other day that he feels almost 100%. He's so close, but the knee doesn't, he doesn't even think about it when he cuts now. Like he feels great. And you can tell how great he feels because he is making plays out there. Today he they ran some type of screen and he blocked a I believe it was a safety. I can't remember exactly who it was, but put him on their ass and 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 finished the block through the sidelines and it was one of those where you're like, "Damn. That's a receiver. He he's going to be special, man. He's so fun to watch. His big playability. Everybody knows it from Colorado. Like he was he, he was such an electrifying force as a true freshman, their leading receiver. Um Fans should get excited about him, and fans should definitely get excited about Jake Smith. I, I can't say enough about this kid and how how technical he is, how intentional he is, and how much how little wasted movement he has on his routes. Jake Smith is 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 so quick, so again, I I keep coming back to this word intentional. Everything he does is 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 for a purpose on his routes, and he, he never wastes steps and. And just a true gifted route runner that can contort his body and make catches. And speaking of body contortion, Troy O'Meary, we're just naming all of them today. Troy O'Meary, he is king of high pointing balls. And obviously, at at six foot four, odd something, he's gonna be good at that. But his problem at Texas was just not staying healthy. And we've seen him healthy for most of the spring. And it, it's gonna be scary uh, when all of these guys hit the field uh, come. Come September, uh, yeah, th- this wide receiver room is deep. Number five, a lot of sophomores have made a huge jump in ju- in talent and weight, and we mentioned that strength and conditioning staff earlier, but specifically talent. I mean, Keith Abney is could be an every down guy this year. He he can play nickel, he can play outside, he can play inside. I wouldn't be surprised if they put him at safety at some point in some certain packages. He is that dude. He's a true sophomore. We saw him get reps last year. And we, we saw how much he grew as not just a, a person, but a, a football player. And he, he, coaches can't say enough about him off the field. I mean, the dude is going to make an impact on this defense night in and night out uh, in, in 2024. Keith Abney is just is just one of the names. Montana Warren, another guy who got some awesome snaps last year before going down with a with an injury he looks great he looks like he's been at asu for three four years now i mean the dude the dude should have an incredible year and that's not just from the defensive side of the ball you also look at kyson brown um who who made a huge leap who i mentioned earlier that should have a have a have a really good year going into this year and i think not that that's not something just to get excited about for this year because obviously as i've said in the past, college is a lot different from the pros, where year after year, you know, you grow a little bit. Your 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 500 yards receiving goes to 600. No, it's it's your 400 goes to 800, 900. Uh, these leaps they take are much bigger than people realize, uh, especially going from your freshman to sophomore year. So it's not just something to get excited about about these the the, the sophomores this year. You look at the potential of some of the freshmen that came in this year. And you think about them next year and what they're going to look like. That's that's what Kenny's trying to build is people that want to be here and want to work hard as Sun Devils. Uh, and we'll get to a bite they talked about a little bit later. But it, it is it is really exciting to see um, 
because man, the the some of the some of the potential like Tony and I always talk about it. Tony Lewis and Cuba, he his his length, he's built like a prototypical NFL corner, and he's a true freshman. You know the size the size and weight probably isn't there yet. You don't expect it to be there because again, he's a senior in high school technically. I'm so excited to see what he looks like, not only at fall camp, but of ne- but of next year. And I think he's going to be a huge part of this defense next year. Uh, so, 100, percent the the talent and weight of these true sophomores that were here last year, insane. CJ Fight, another guy that I that I mentioned earlier. My God, he he might be the best player on this defensive line this year as a true sophomore. And that's that that's not I'm not that's not hyperbole. Like he's that good. He's real. Tony asking, how's the O line looking, Shane? I'm I'm pretty sure this is a a troll comment from. Uh, from a U of A fan, but it, it's it's looking good. I mean, you know, you can't really emphasize enough how much of bad luck they had last year. I think they had eight or something scholarship offensive linemen go down for the season last year. Not like, like they weren't season-ending injuries, but you know, a week eight injury that's a two week injury, three week injury is essentially a season ender. Like they they played almost everybody they had uh, of recruited like walk ons and. And scholarship guys on that offensive line last year, and as I've said in the past, like offensive line is is isn't just this like thing where you can plug and play guys. Like you, the the, the biggest thing you need in offensive line is consistency. You need to know that you know Lee Fautanu as your center is is going to fill the fill the gaps that your right guard leaves if you're the right tackle. You need to know that that left guard is going to be there if the left tackle has to has to go somewhere else. You need to know. That the guys that you're in the trenches with are going to go to war with you, and you need another tendencies, and and obviously the the units are one cohesive thing, but there's no unit that has to be more cohesive than the offensive line. Like they do so many little things that the average football fan doesn't notice, and and having starters consistently uh, is, is huge. Tony, I appreciate that. No, I just hope your QB doesn't get killed. I hope so too. I hope they're able to pr- protect the quarterbacks more than they were last year, and I expect them to as well. I think it's looking solid. Um, we have some breaking news, apparently. Some breaking uh, breaking Sun Devil basketball news. Oh, we got a Bobby Hurley tweet. I got my Bobby Hurley notifications on. He tweeted a forks up. ASU basketball. This is what happens when you only have one person on the show because there's nobody to fill the void with talking about. Um, I'll get to it in a little bit. What do you want to talk about, Shane? Well, hold on. You can you can just keep the fans entertained oh, for a second. Yeah. What's uh? What's how are we doing, chat? How are we feeling? <laughs> it was uh, Daniel's birthday yesterday. It was my birthday yesterday. Everybody, yeah. everybody, drop a happy birthday. Let's talk about birthdays. How do we feel about birthdays, chat? Birthdays are great. I'm not a big fan of birthdays personally. Really? Yeah, I've always hated birthdays, but yeah, we did it. We made it. Went to the zoo. Took a bunch of pictures. Go check out my zoo pictures. Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite Instagram? zoo animal? My favorite zoo animal. Uh, just zoos in general or at the Phoenix Zoo specifically? Whoa. Bashir Bashir Jihad. Probably butchered that last name. Uh or his entire name. Ball State 6'9 forward transfer. Breaking news. Thank you. God, we haven't had breaking news in a while. This is what I'm talking about. And we can put football aside for, for a second. We'll talk about this more at the end of the end of the show. But breaking news, Ball State. Six foot nine transfer forward Bashir Jihad has committed to ASU. He averaged 18.6 and eight boards per game. Second team all Mac, baby. We love a Mac forward. Come on. Put it in. Put it in the veins. Let's go. Uh, you know, I know JJ was sad about Zane Meeks and Celebungay's departure today and earlier yesterday. But but this is the beautiful thing about the transfer portal. You can you can you can replace them. Uh, awesome. Well, we get, we'll get to that later in the show because we're going to talk a little more basketball um, toward the tail end. But let's get into number six or is it seven? Six. The quarterback competition. We've learned that it's a three-way battle for sure, and and obviously guys like Trent Borgay aren't just going to go away. Uh, who who played a ton of snaps for ASU last year and and primarily was their starting quarterback. But you bring in Sam Levitt, and and you bring back obviously Rashada, like that that's a that's a three way quarterback battle. And I know we've talked about it in the past where it could just be between Rashada and Levitt, but no, I think Borgay is going to have a real shot at this job uh, come the fall camp. And 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 I think it's a little bit disrespectful to say that he's going to have a shot. So let me take that back. I I think that all three of them have just as equal as opportunity, and I, they've are all earned it. Like 
the reason why Kenny bring, brought in Levitt wasn't because he didn't trust someone. It's because he loves competition. And and he's he's told people in the past he's never gonna lie to you. He's never gonna he's never gonna tell you to come to ASU if he doesn't think you should be here. Uh he wants these guys here. So I think these three are gonna are, are, are really gonna have to battle it out in, in the fall. And we haven't seen enough of Rashada to really know where he's at talent wise. Uh but it's gonna be exciting to see. Uh speaking of Rashada, Rashada was able to throw in sevens today and uh he looked really good. So Jaden Rashada uh is is tracking faster and Kenny mentioned it uh today. He it, it did surprise him how fast he was able to uh get throwing. So that is number six. Number seven is what I just mentioned. It seems we probably avoided the worst case scenario with Jaden Rashada. It seems that he, you know, at, at when we first heard about this weird injury that it could sit him out all fall camp and he might throw a little bit. He's throwing in sevens already and he looks he looks pretty good. He he, he had a, he had, a, he had a ball today that uh, got picked by um, Kamari Wilson. But it looked more like disguised coverage and less of just an errant throw. The throw wasn't great by any means, and I don't really expect him to be playing his best football right now. But, uh, yeah, Rashad is definitely ahead of track. So, number seven seems we avoided the worst-case scenario with Rashad. Uh, number eight, the defensive back coach search is ongoing, and I think just like Rashad tracking faster than some people might have thought, we got a chance to ask Kenny – uh, today about what that defensive back coach searches timeline is looking like and this is what he had to say it has it has unfortunately it started on sunday which was my dad's birthday which was unfi- unfortunate but uh yeah it started uh really it started last friday and uh you know just putting the names that i have you know i always have a list of names of people that we're going to look at if a job opens for every position so then it's okay you take those list of names and they're all in different circumstances. So maybe you haven't updated it in two months. Oh, well, that guy got a job here now. So that guy's out, out. This guy's here, this guy's there. And then you kind of put it together and uh, then you create a final five. We talked to six guys this week already. Uh, so we're in a good spot. Hopefully we'll be able to make a move here in the next week, if not sooner. Yeah, it's, it's awesome news if you're an ASU football fan to know that you should have your defensive backs coach replacement here in the next week. As Kenny said, he talked to six six candidates. Um, we know probably who a couple of those are. Troy Brown, uh, Heinz Ward, uh, but who knows who they could bring in. As I said on yesterday's show, or maybe Monday's show, it, or Tuesday's show, whenever that was, it to me it's like, look, I can get I can tell you guys who I want, and you can tell, you know, everybody who who you think would be the best fit. But at the end of the day, the reason why I think Kenny is such a great fit for this program is that he is focused on the culture first and he's only going to bring in a defensive back coach who is as focused on the culture as he is and is able to buy in to the culture and 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 mesh with the co- culture like he is. You're not going to get these weird situations where you bring in, you know, ex defensive backs coach that you used to work with in the NFL and and you know it's this it's this weird old school, new school thing, and it, it shouldn't be like that. And 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 so I can sit here and tell you who I want, but at the end of the day, I'm whoever Kenny brings in, I'm confident is going to do uh, a tremendous job, and I'm I'm really excited for it. That being said, I think it would be pretty cool to have a guy like Troy Brown, who was on such a talented roster, uh, or was a part of building such a talented roster in New England and helping a talented roster in New England. But as I said. I think Kenny will bring in the best option for the Sun Devils. Number nine, the number nine thing we've learned throughout spring ball is that I think the freshmen on this defense, just like last year, are going to try to make an impact and are going to make an impact immediately. Uh, you know, you might have some guys redshirt, and there's different positions that are obviously going to redshirt before another position. Like the DB room is stacked. I think one, maybe two of these guys that we've talked about could make an impact early, but I think probably. Half of the DBs, maybe maybe less, will redshirt uh, going into to to this year. I think the defensive line. I don't think you're going to see a lot of those guys because that a lot of a lot again. It's a lot of position based things. Like your your defensive line and offensive line freshmen are probably not going to play their first year unless they're just an anomaly like CJ Fight. They're going to have to put on that weight uh, that you get at training for a full year at Division One University. But I think a lot of them are going to be be able to make an impact 
uh, this this year. And, and 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 again, we haven't seen most of them. Most of them don't report until the fall. So there there's a couple names out there that I'm that I'm super excited to see. I'm super excited to see Plas Johnson, another defensive back. Obviously, he was listed as an athlete. He played both sides of the ball. But we talked in the past. Brian Carrington said he's ours. He's a defensive back's room. Like they're not letting him see the offensive side of the ball because he's that talented. So that's another name to look at for Jason Brown, Junior, the 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 the, the four star running back that's going to be here in the fall. He's going to be really exciting to watch, and I think a lot of them are going to be able to make an impact um, in their first year, in their true first year. So that's that's exciting. Uh, speaking of freshmen, obviously yesterday we got news that wasn't great, but kind of expected toward the end. Uh, number one player in Arizona, or number one receiver in Arizona, Cooper Perry, uh, committed to Oregon uh, over ASU, Washington, and a couple other schools. Again, that was kind of expected. He was talking to to Samp as his main recruiter. Samp then moves goes to Oregon, gets that assistant coaching running backs gig, uh, and now he's there. That being said, Kenny, his emphasis has always been, you know, get keep the local guys local win with local guys. But here's the number 10 thing that I think I've learned throughout spring ball and learned it today. I think is the emphasis. And again, I, I still believe that he wants local guys to stay local and that's his number one goal here or number two goal. Cause the number one goal is, is winning and always has been. But I think the emphasis is now focused more on guys that just want to be here rather than local guys. And he's not going to go out of his way to, to convince a local guy if he doesn't want to be here. And that's the number 10 thing that we've learned in spring ball. And Kenny had had some things to say. And, and I don't know if this had anything to do with the Cooper Perry announcement and him not not staying in Arizona, but the, the timing was great uh, for for us to talk about it. So this is what Kenny had to say about, you know, the freshmen and, and recruiting guys that, that want to be here. I feel good. Very good. Like, they're, they're both really talented players. Uh, that's why we signed them and it shows up and they're competitive and that's what you look for is you know I had a coach tell me the other day he goes man this entire position group is competitive they love ball awesome that's what we're recruiting to we're recruiting people who love ball and want to be at Arizona State we are never going to trick somebody to come here never going to lie to somebody to come here I want people who want to be here and those people are going to be people from Texas California Hawaii maybe Arizona that's not my choice that's other kids I don't care. We're going to win. We're going to win here. That is going to happen. I can guarantee it. Whether we win with the kid from five miles away or we win with the kid from 300 miles away. I would love to do it with the kid like me who born and raised here. That's not my choice, but we will win. And we're going to win with people who want to be Sun Devils and who want to be here for the long run. Yeah. That, I mean, that tells you all you need to know about the culture that Kenny's building is, and, and that's something that's so unique about Kenny is he, he's, he, he, and this isn't just a front. Like he tells you how it is. doesn't matter if you're media, doesn't matter if you're a player, doesn't matter if you're a coach. Uh, he, he keeps it real. And that's what I really appreciate about the man. And, and, and it, that's the same way. And then the, the biggest emphasis with recruiting, he makes sure that the kid knows what they're getting into. If, if a guy is coming here and he said this on record before, if a kid is coming here and he's not going to get playing time his first and maybe even his second year, he's going to tell him that. And he's going to tell him, you probably have a better opportunity playing at a different school. Uh, and that doesn't go with just transfers and 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 freshmen coming in. That goes with guys on the roster currently that, that he's, he's talked about. So it's just a breath of fresh air when it comes to a college football head coach with Kenny Dillingham and Sharon. Yes, yeah, so of course, I meant wide receivers coach, not, not defensive backs coach. Uh, they're, they're looking at six candidates for the wide receiver coach position. Um, Brian Carrington is still here, very much still the swaggiest coach on the roster, I have to say. Um, we did not lose our defensive backs coach. LTC, Kenny is in a zone, and nothing will distract him from his end goal building ASU football. 100%. 100%. As Sharon says, I love how much Dilly truly believes that this will happen. And I, he does. And Again, it's not a front with him. The guy speaks with intention and speaks only things he believes in, and he believes in this program, and he believes in himself to build this program, and, and, and so do I, and I think Sun Devil fans should too. And I also think Sun Devil fans should stop at Circle K when they need gas, when they need snacks, when they need whatever they want. Circle K is the place to be for anything, whether it's food, whether it's a nice cold bev, whether it's even like a, a meal sometimes. If you need a quick meal, Circle K has got you. 
or of course gas got the best vibes at any gas station in the valley uh and it's america's thirst shop like as i said if you need a drink you need a you need a you need a big thing of iced tea big thing of whatever big thing of sodi sodi pop you can get a at circle k it's the best place to do all of that and you can save 25 cents per gallon on your first five fill-ups with their new free membership program the inner circle uh pizza coffee ice cold fountain drinks get every sixth free on a selection of circle k products join the inner circle for free by downloading the circle k app terms and conditions apply at participating locations visit circlek.com for more details also visit all of the iconic landscapes we have in Arizona because the Arizona Lottery is introducing a new ticket and promotion called Arizona Adventure. I'm a big hiking person. Love going hiking. Um, and, and and the Arizona Lottery wants you to do that because you can check in at their geolocated adventures at 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma. All you got to do is you go to az, azadventure.com for details and directions. Check in at the destination coordinates on the website or enter tickets online for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. The Arizona Lottery says proceeds from the ticket sales support environmental conservation, among other important initiatives across the state. And the Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. JJ, where are you? We need you here because we got some good news for ASU Hoops. I had ASU Hoops slated in the third slot because we're going to talk about some sad news. But no, not anymore. We don't even need, well, we didn't need to talk about that. But we're, we're gonna we're not gonna focus on that as much. Um, Zane Meeks, Brian Celebonge in the portal. As of now, you have four guys coming back, I believe. Five guys coming back. Four guys coming back and five guys incoming as freshmen and transfers. Now six. Um with the addition of Bashir Jihad, Ball State, Cardinal Forward. As I said, his stats last year, 18.6 points a game eight boards on 45 percent shooting obviously he played in the mac and i do love talking about mac basketball and mac football but the talent isn't up to the bar of what the big 12 is going to be next year so will that translate we'll see uh but he fills a huge void in this roster with all of the losses that you had at the forward position lonzo gaffney graduating brian salabunga just entering the portal um saint meeks entering the portal it, he, he, and to be honest, the forward position was lacking a lot last year as well. Um, so getting a guy like this, getting a big guy who plays big, 6'9", 240, uh, is, is going to be huge for for Bobby Hurley and the Sun Devils. God, I miss those Bobby Hurley forks up tweets. It's my favorite time of the year. And it's 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 kind of it's kind of strange that this is my favorite time of the year because it's always the most uncertain time for ASU basketball. But I think that's why it's so fun. Because, you, you know, when you're in the middle of the ASU basketball season, you kind of just know what's, what, what's going to happen. And you kind of just, you're, you know, it's not uncertain. And it's more fun to be uncertain than certain right now, at least. Uh, and, God, those Bobby Hurley forks up tweet notifications hit like crack. They're the best. So, first of the year, Bashir Jihad, or we'll get the pronunciation better next show, I promise, is a Sun Devil. Um, as I said, 18.6 points a game, 8 boards, 6'9", 240. We love it. We love it. We hope that more and more will be on the way. LTC in the chat saying we need an influx of max Mac transfers in Tempe. I don't know. I don't know if, if you need that. I think it'd be fun. Great Mac transfer. Great Sun Devil. Marion Jackson uh, played the Mac at Toledo. Mac player of the year, actually. Uh, so, so, yeah, maybe, maybe they do need more Mac transfers. Um, but maybe you need more. PHNX and you can go to gophnx.com for all of your needs for Arizona sports. Obviously there's a lot up in the air with the coyotes um, and you can only get that at one place. And that is our PHNX coyote show. They'll have another show today and all of the great stuff that you can read from Craig Morgan is on gophnx.com. Also all of our events are over there. We got a couple great ones coming up. Gophnx.com slash events. My favorite event we throw is the keep 100 golf tournament. And that is happening May 10th here at Dobson Ranch Golf Course. Make sure to come out and support uh, not only us, but there should be some ASU players playing. And I know uh, Trent Borgay wants to get his revenge last year. We're, we're in the same group, and we won the Honesty Award, which meant we came in last. Um, so come out to our Keep 100 Golf Tournament for sure. And uh, that's about all we got for you today. We'll be back Friday. 
uh, Jose Perez will be with me, Eric Ruby. So make sure to come hang out with us on an OG flavoring Friday. We're going to have hot or not. We're going to talk more ASU football, more ASU basketball, and just have some overall shenanigans. Guys, thank you for hanging out with me on this solo show. I appreciate everybody that tuned in, LTC, Sharon, and everyone else. Uh, been a pleasure. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Shane D. Follow the show on Twitter at PHNX underscore Sunday. Always follow PHNX underscore sports across all socials, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And until tomorrow, we'll see you next time. Peace and go Devils. We all silly like the mayor. 